All right, we are recording and subscribing. All right, I think we'll get started. Welcome everyone to our <coughs> second successive Media Over Quick virtual interim. This is again an experiment and um, if you have any feedback for the chairs, please don't hesitate to send to MOQ chairs based on this experience. We're still um, ironing out the kinks and we'll see how this this goes and, and then have a longer term strategy after our in-person interim on 17 to 19 June. Uh, I'll remind you for the first time that if you have not already emailed me with your plans to attend the in-person interim uh, and you're planning to do so, please please email the MOQ chairs uh, if you're planning to, to show up in Seattle in person and uh, what days you're planning to attend. Uh, I know some people probably will not attend the interop, others might not uh, want to attend on Juneteenth, so please let me know what's going on and I can get a head count for uh, our hosts on each day. Can't let me advance this slide. Ah, because I'm in the wrong tab. There we go. Okay, uh, this is the note well. Um, I think probably all of you have seen this before. If you have any questions about how uh, intellectual property rules, et cetera, and conduct, um, the code of conduct apply to this meeting, please type IETF note well into your favorite search engine and read to your heart's content. Um, we're going to use, uh, as you've probably figured out by now, we're going to use Google Meet for all the AV in this meeting. However, chat will occur in Meet Echo uh, using the Zulip app, or you could use the Zulip app for that. Um, and uh, you've been all been forced to uh, go through Meet Echo to get the link to this meeting so that you have automatically signed the blue sheets. So thank you for jumping through those hoops for us. If you have any questions about how this meeting works, don't hesitate to say so. For queuing, we're going to use Google Meet today. So just use the little raise your hand button there. And uh, there's some good ordering. So we'll just maintain the queue in that in that fashion. This is today's agenda. Uh, as as we did last week, uh, Ian will, um, as the editor of MOQ Transport, will drive things. Um, on Monday, we published kind of specifics on what, what PRs we're going to talk about. So this is that. Does that. Would anyone like to bash the agenda at this time? All right, hearing none, we'll jump right to uh, Ian. Oh, well, actually, before we jump to Ian, we need scribes for today. Do we have any volunteers to take notes about this meeting? There is a recording, so, um, you know, really what we need are like major decisions, major points that, that we talk about today. Do we have any volunteers? Alan will send virtual chocolate if you volunteer. Looking for hands. If anyone would like to hum the Jeopardy theme song, uh, you're welcome to. In the interest of time, I'll just do it again. Um, but we should, and like, I'm in the right doc this time. So we, not Mathis and I both doing it at the same time. So. Okay. <laughs> yes, Mathis was kind enough to volunteer last time. Um, yeah, you know, it's not great that we're making one of the chairs do it. Uh, chairs should be running the meeting, not taking minutes. But uh, I guess in the interest of time, we'll do that. Please consider um, uh, please consider your, your ability to, to maybe take these notes in, in upcoming weeks. Uh, this experiment is not going to work if we don't have someone take minutes that isn't Alan. Thank you, Alan, for uh, doing double duty today. All right, and uh, with that, I'm going to uh, give up control of the of the slides and hand it over to Ian. Ian, it's all you. <clears throat> Perfect. Thanks. Um, sadly, I got COVID, uh, but that doesn't matter because we're all remote. So yay for that. Um, the what was I going to say? Uh, oh, actually, one practical question, Martin. Um, after one logs in through Data Tracker and everything, is there a reason to keep that window open? Uh, only if you want to participate in the chat. The chat's not on mute. That's that's correct. The official meeting chat is Zulip, so that it's properly archived, et cetera. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I just want to clarify. I'm not sure if others yeah. have My org also blocks the Google Meet chat. So <laughs> we can't use it if I want to. Okay. That's good now. Um I actually would like to start with the priority one because it's kind of it's been lingering around and I think it I mean my intuition was it's 
we are going to want a um, subscriber driven sort of priority mechanism at some point. Um, and it's going to look probably approximately like this. I realize that we haven't sorted out the rest of priorities. Um, but if we could get kind of the easiest bits nailed down, I thought that would be helpful, at least from a personal perspective. So I don't know if um, people have had time to take a look at that PR. I will pull it up and present. Um, but sorry, let me find the post. Present. Hey, folks, see? Yes. Okay, wonderful. Right. Um, yes. So this is what, I mean, is the minimum possible thing you can say, which is when I make a subscription, very much like, um, I mean, it's kind of in keeping with, uh, I guess, web transport slash HTTP priorities. You know, when I make a subscription, I can give it a priority and, you know, the person servicing that subscription should try to send data from that subscription before other subscriptions of uh, higher priorities. So lower wins kind of thing. Um, did, and this has come up as a thing we probably want for ABR and a number of other use cases, maybe audio prioritizing audio higher than video, so on and so forth in a few times. Um, do people here have, have thoughts both on the particular proposal and as well as on the idea of like making some forward progress on this sooner rather than later. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out how I raise my hand. I can't. <laughs> uh, there's a little hand button at the okay, bottom. So it, not it didn't work the first time. Now it's working. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go for it. Go. Yes, I am the only other person in the queue. Uh, I, I agree with your analysis. We'll probably end up with something roughly like this. It's just that. We don't agree on the use cases. We don't agree on the overall approach to deal with them. And we're discussing how to move the bits around without knowing what we're trying to do. It seems like this should be left for the interim meeting when we can get two days to sit down and actually figure out how to put the whole solution together, not just piecemeal pieces of it. But that said, I'm not saying we won't end up with something like this. It just seems like discussing it's like, oh, we'll put a placeholder to move some bits that we don't know what they mean or what happens in America or the whole how the whole solution fits together seems it seems like we should get the big picture before we figure out the detail of how we move this one bit around. Um, that, that was my, my only comment. I don't and I'm, like, like, yeah. I, don't, I don't feel too strongly on it one way or another. It's just like we specifically said this was the topic of our interim meeting coming up. <laughs> and now we're, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think. Trying to get everything done at once, unfortunately, is like there's some mix of incrementalism with like a full vision that, of how you want it to end up. Um, and so I, I guess I, I concluded the same thing you did, which is we're probably going to end up with something like this. Um, and so my conclusion was different, which is, well, why don't we just land it now? Because we know we're going to want something like this. And yes, we haven't we don't have the full picture, but at least. Um, because There's other cases we have right now. Is the people who want only this, right, will then object to everything else being landed, right? And that's why the people who want more than this want to wait until we have a bigger picture together and we have all the pieces brought in at the same time. I, I think that the, I, I'm trying to figure out what is bothering me about this. I think fundamentally that's it. Because this by itself is not enough. And some people will think it is. So that's that's my issue with landing it. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, does anyone in this group think that this is sufficient? I think a lot of people think it's necessary. I don't think it's sufficient, but do other people think it's sufficient? And maybe that'd be a conversation worth discussing. Luke? Yeah, I think it needs a little bit more than this, uh, yep. to kind of Cullen's point. Um, even send order right now is undefined. It's really not clear what you would do if you got an object with a priority and you got a track with a priority. Like, what <laughs> do I do? You know. So I think it does need to be spelled a little bit more. Um, again, I do agree with you that this is the right direction. I just don't see how a lot of use cases work unless the subscriber can tell you it wants this track over another. Um, but yeah, we need to make sure it covers things, I think, before we add it. Otherwise, somebody will implement this and not know what to do. Oh, yeah, that's kind of where we are with send order, unfortunately. Okay. Um, okay, to us, go for it. 
Yeah, that, I think my, my some of the thoughts are reflected in the comments. Uh, um, I, I definitely think uh, this this requires some more things to clarify um, on some of the behavior, and and also um, what what like how the publisher priority versus uh, subscriber priority works works, and also uh, and also some of the use cases that we implemented where you want audio track to be uh, uh, important to the video track is mainly controlled on the publisher side, not on the subscriber side. I want to understand better how, how why is the uh, what's the uh, use case here, and uh, and also the same thing about the ABR. Um, the, at least our naive implement naive implementation of ABR has been more of uh, I unsubscribe or freeze a track uh, when I when my congestion control says you know uh, or my uh, the fear the, the the feedback says I cannot sustain a particular quality. I freeze or unsubscribe uh, and subscribe to the one that's that is allowed at the point in time, and not really deal with the priorities for ABR. But yes, uh, regardless of that, I, I, I think we, we need we need more discussion than much of it right now. Sure. I am, if people don't feel like we want to make progress on this, I am happy to park this and go back to delivery preference in TTL and all of those fun things. Um, but um, um, please. Uh, yeah, just in terms of like what we're planning for the upcoming interim, um, We've started to like gather like use cases in one place, and we expect to sort of send that out to the list soon, so people can start just discussing like just use cases for priorities, and make sure that we have some common language before we go in to go design a priority system. We should know what priorities are for and what we're trying to achieve with them. Um, and I think Suhas is also right that sometimes something the same sort of ordering of bits on the wire can be achieved with lots of different mechanisms. Sometimes that's priority. Sometimes it might be TTL or cache duration. People are like kind of mixing lots of different things together. So um, anyway, I, I hope that will like build some clarity and like view it from a, a big picture. I think I'm also as an individual in agreement that we should like not land this PR until we have a better understanding of like what we're trying to do. Um, but I think that something like this will probably end up in the final solution. Yeah. Oh, Jordy. And then we can move on. Yeah, I think I I, I agree with Alan. I think we should uh, analyze few use cases at least. For for instance, I see two differences, main difference here. For ABR, if we ask for all lanes at the very beginning, it seems quite simple to implement, and this should uh, should uh, should be okay. But in a more dynamic environment where we ask for a track now and in the future for another track uh, that I don't know, and then another track that. Uh, adds a lot of complexity, and this definitely is not enough. I think to that parameter is not enough to uh, implement that use case. So focusing on use cases, I think now makes sense. Okay. Thank you. Um, then let's go back to the regularly regularly scheduled program. Um, Victor, did you end up flipping this one around, or uh, I did. Thank you. I have not looked at it since you did. Okay. Um, so this was the delivery timeout concept. Um, I think the group largely agreed that they would like the uh, subscriber to be to be driving the process. Um, Victor, do you want to talk through the changes? It looks like is wait. I don't mind you talk through the changes because I'm sorry I haven't gotten to read this today. Sure. Uh, so the changes is it's now a parameter on the subscribe request, which also solves the issue of like the magic zero value. It's no longer magic. Uh, you just can't, not allowed to specify. Uh, other than that, I think the tax should mostly be the same. Uh, this is still, a, yeah. So one thing I had thought of when I was kind of going through my more like thought process CPR was whether um, the subscribe OK should have an indication of like what the publisher is willing to provide um, to provide, provide like an obvious example. Like if there is a delivery timeout um, and you say, I would like a day of delivery timeout, um, it's it's likely the relay publisher is un, uninterested in like actually agreeing to that. Like, should they echo the value that they're actually like willing to agree in the same sense that like, um, you know, idle timeouts are commonly agreed to be like the lowest of the two peer requested values. Uh, 
Uh, okay, I think Victor is first, and then Luke. Uh, I actually added a text which says something like, "If there are many timeouts, so the lowest applies." Uh, sure. But basically, like, I think we should like there are cases in which I imagine the really or the publisher might want to just time out things regardless, like. It's running out of memory, and under memory pressure, it had to like shorten its buffer or things like that. Sure. Um, yeah. So, then clearly, I mean, resource constraints will also apply, but like, so like my my view of this, this is like a client. Sorry, this is a subscriber asking the peer to basically do not send if this is up to this timeline. So this is applies on top, this is not like a guarantee that it will be available. This is just like my receive my reorder buffer is two seconds. I do not care about like extra time. So please do not send it to me. Okay. Uh Luca please next. Yeah, I, I see this is uh max age just on the other side of the the, the spectrum. So subscribers saying, just don't send me anything after two seconds. Not that it's an error if you send something greater than two seconds. Like that could totally happen. Things are racy. Um, also, it's fine if you drop something earlier than that. That's just what's going to happen in distributed systems. You can't promise that you must deliver everything up to two seconds. Um, so I think this is good. And the one thing I wanted to point out to the group as well, reading the text here, is that this is based on the end of a, a group. Uh, so this is when you last receive an object, um, which has some ramifications. Um, I think it's nice, but it is a little different because usually timeouts start at the beginning of a resource, not the end. Thank you. Uh, Colin or Suhas, I believe, are next, but I'm not sure. Or is there a queue over? Go ahead, Suhas. I don't know which queue we're using. There are. Uh, Colin, you are actually in front of to us. Based we, on... we are using the meet queue, not the baby echo queue. So the Google queue, the Google queue is the one we're using. Is that like the Google meet? OK. It's so confusing. These things are all called meet. Uh, uh, OK. So um, I mean, I don't. Does this replace the other timeouts that we have? Because this doesn't meet any of the use cases I'd identified in this VR. So it, it does not replace the other, like the server driven concept of a timeout or like max age or anything like that it is, um, it is complementary. And it, I think it, for use cases where you want tight granularity, like millisecond level granularity and hop by hop um, timeouts, I think it's, it's appropriate, but it does not replace like the, the thing we were kind of discussing towards the end of the last um, interim one hour interim about like kind of a max AG sort of thing that is a server driven concept. Okay, so I would like to point out that if we have different timeouts inside a group, um, it doesn't work. And the idea that the subscriber knows what it wants, it doesn't work for a ton of the use cases, right? Only the publisher knows because it's different. It's when the data is created, you understand what its timeout should be. And that's gonna be more and more true as we go to scalable codecs. So I, Though I, uh, though we could have 50 different types of timeouts, I, I again sort of wonder how this fits in with the other ones and sort of want to fit the big picture together and want to make sure that we still have ways to meet those use cases and we don't remove those because we have this instead. And if the order was the reverse the other way around, it's different, but on, on this one. So, I mean, I like again, I, I, I just sort of, I'm, I, I don't. It's I don't have a problem with this. I have a I have a question about what are the other things that are, that are there or not. What are the other timeouts that go along with this one at the same time? Right, that's the problem. And I, I just I cannot understand. And I don't understand how these get aggregated upstream either. But that's that's a separate issue. Yeah. To us, I, I think uh, it's more more of a clarification question or a better of me trying to understand this better, because it's a subscribe uh, driven, so it's per. Subscription means it like each subscriber applies this to a track, and when they say timeout of some x milliseconds, that means that uh, uh, whichever mode that you're using, say group in that case, are you saying that the entire group will um, if, if the entire group cannot be delivered within that timeout, basically you I, I, you you don't need to deliver. Um, if if that's the case, I, I'm 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 trying to understand if the max duration on the max age or the object cache duration is been set. Uh, per object and 
and if that and what we said for this part group on the subscription side from uh, um, if they do conflict uh, what the resolution mechanism is and and also i everything driven from subscription uh, subscription i i always have this question about yes we do not have we are we are norm normatively not saying what relay should do but anyone who reads the, who reads this draft and wants to implement a relay uh, they need to do what to do uh, with these parameters when they want to uh, set up subscribe upstream and none of these things are talking anything about that um, either we need to say something or say I, I like I won't kind of get inputs on in, in, input on that one. Like, what's our uh, plan of when uh, different subscriptions come for the same track with different times out or different priorities for that matter? How does it reflect on the other side of the picture? And the interaction, uh, the other uh, the other uh, uh, concern I have is the interaction between the cache duration and this one. Like, how would an application as publisher thinks about how to set an uh, object cache to, uh, the, the max cache max age versus a subscriber who Based on uh, what are they think set, how do they basically interact? Something I'm not very clear. I'm looking at those two PS together. Yep. Um, so um, I'll let Victor go, but uh, I think it's a good question about how much we text we should spend on describing like what relays do with some of these things. Um, I was inclined towards doing less for now because I I think you kind of need to know the whole picture before you can describe it. But I can see a number of approaches. Um, Victor, um, go for it. Yeah, so one thing is uh, to answer this question, it depends on whether the relay is talking to uh, another relay, in which case the answer is, uh, I honestly don't know. It depends on how your relay network is set up. If your relay is directly subscribing to publisher, uh, the answer is you don't actually need to tell the publisher delivery timeout because publisher has can based on application preferences time out the objects itself and you do not need to tell it how much to time out uh, so that is my answer to that problem uh, other thing i wanted to clarify is uh, there so luke pointed out that this is depends on final object but in particular uh, for strings for group but in particular this is for the final object we see it so the way this works is uh, you receive the full gob from the publisher, and as soon as you receive the final object frame of that gob, the timeout starts, which means that uh, the expectation is it will be transmitted for some time, and then it will be timed out when you have the next gob. That's more relevant. Alan. We're next on. Um, okay, so speaking as an individual, um, I think I like the framing of this. I think we can resolve the issues about how it gets merged upstream. I think I see it as fairly orthogonal to cache duration, which is about how the publisher, the publisher's relationship with the cache, which involves billing and everything else, how long I want you to store this thing to keep it fresh versus the the subscriber is like, I don't care about stuff that's older than this. Um, so I like the idea of separating this. I do have a question, which is like, I was thinking about how I'd implement this and how I have like buffers in my quick stack. So like, it's super easy for me to evaluate this timeout before I like push data into a stream, but I don't right now have the concept of like, uh, timing this thing out once it's in the stream. So I don't know if you if anybody wants to like comment on like sort of like the implementability of this and also the implementability of this in web transport um, from the browser side. Like does the browser have the capability to time things out in this way once it goes into the transport or where we see that line happening? Cool. Thanks. Uh, Luke, fair enough. Yeah, so I just wanted to quickly clarify. I didn't make that go. This is basically a timeout per stream, so it's not it's not timing out based on the last object in the group. Uh, it depends on what mode you're doing. Um, but and I just wanted to clarify for Suhas, um, the the max age that the publisher sets is effectively your cache age. Like if you set this to be two hours, it's going to cache it on a relay for two hours. A publisher chooses would be the logic I would expect the relay to implement. Technically, it can do whatever it wants. Um, 
this is mostly for the subscriber to say, actually, I want something less than that. Like, I don't send me stuff from two hours ago. My jitter buffer is three seconds. If it's, I don't care if it's in cache, just don't send me anything older than three seconds. Um, so this is really just the bandwidth optimization. It's just trying to say, like, don't waste my bandwidth on old stuff. And I would expect this delivery timeout buffer uh, value to be the jitter buffer max size. So, because anything bigger than that is useless, effectively. Um, so that's, I, again, that's just maybe a better way of framing this. This is max jitter buffer size. Uh, thanks, uh, Mo. I mean, yeah, this is all framed in terms of relay. Um, so this seems to be exclusively for the distribution side. But wouldn't we want something similar for the contribution side? Uh, wouldn't wouldn't uh, the origin want to be able to indicate something like this to the leaf publisher for contribution as well? And none of this language would make any sense for that case. Uh I, I think my answer would be yes, Mo, and maybe that's an editorial thing that we should fix up. I, we have occasionally, I think this is an editorial issue about like when we use what term, but like sometimes we use relay when I think, I think at least that like something like this would apply regardless of whether you're quote unquote a relay as long as you're a publisher. Is that accurate, Victor? Uh, so I think, yes, I actually was thinking of rewriting this to be that way, but in quite things through. The previous version only worked for relays because it was like you put a, like unsubscribe, it's like the other direction, so you could tell really like how to time out. But this one actually like both works for you on delivery and on the publisher the origin telling you the publisher how to time out so yes this is mostly we we need to reorder it but, but there is no reason for it to not work that way just yeah uh i'm still trying to read the text uh because i already did not read this pr before um so going back to, I'm trying to now understand Luke's uh, explanation. I'm reading the text again. So if if I understand correctly, what Luke said is that this is my jitter buffer side, um, and don't send me if it's more than three seconds. And when I apply that to the text that's written in, uh, if the if group is the preference of for stream mapping, then it says uh, once you receive the final group, uh, like the entire group is uh, received, and if it's uh, more than three seconds, then don't send it. Um, the, the thing I'm trying to understand is that like we we are distributing. Either we use a um, stream mapping of group or object or track. We are distributing objects. Uh, at the end of the day, in uh, in, the, in jitter buffer, we store objects that has to be rendered. So the granularity of things that we set should be at the object granularity. And and the way it's written is that in when you're using stream per object, this delivery timeout applies to the objects. When you're using stream per group, it applies to the group. But jitter buffer has no clue of any of those things. At the end of the day, I have three seconds of objects I need to fill in. Uh, and and this kind of gives like half groups sometimes like no groups can sometimes um, maybe I, I'm still not able to understand the utility of this this one when we apply it to stream per map, uh, stream mapping here. So as can I have, uh, ask a follow up question? Uh, is what you're saying that uh, say a relay got a group uh, fundamentally like instantaneously from the perspective of a delivery perspective, and then you instead of having the uh, delivery time up based on the final object uh, that was, oh, would, I guess in that case, it wouldn't matter because it's all at once. Right, right. You... Uh, the, my, my concern is that at least the stream mapping was object, we are seeing the delivery timeout of three seconds applies to objects. If the stream mapping, mapping is group, it applies to three seconds of the group. If it's track, uh, I, 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 need to read, I, I don't see the track at least seen here, but maybe uh, Victor might clarify, on, on, maybe I'm reading it wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to understand it better, sorry. Uh, I should have I should have prepared more, but sorry for confusion. Let's go. Sorry, I was trying to explain for you, but then I realized I get myself confused. Uh, Colin, go for it. So, I mean, if this is to deal with the jitter buffer use case, and we're talking thinking about the real time use cases, and let's say we have a 200 millisecond jitter buffer, be be a large jitter buffer, probably more like 60 milliseconds. Um, you know, if we're using 30 second GOP sequences, using the end of the GOP sequence doesn't, you, you know, not having this timer start to the end of the GOP sequence doesn't work at all for the use case this is allegedly solving. So I think we do need to figure out what use cases this is solving. Um, I, I, I do think this could work, but I think it would need to be off the actual individual objects. And I also don't see why we're defining this only in streams, like this should work for datagram, it could work for all the stream modes. 
It just seems like it's like we should think about this as a constraint on objects, um, regardless of how they were delivered and, and get those separated apart. Now, eventually we might want to have something about how in certain modes streams get reset if you're exceeding these timers. That's that's a separate thing, which isn't covered by this at, at all anyway. And I think we do need to address the, the upstreaming type issue because the upstreaming issue becomes very relevant where um, you have a relay in the Wi-Fi access point in a home, but you have another relay upstream of that and the congested link is in between those two relays, right? Then, then this, you know, so uh, I, I don't know. I, it just sort of seems like we're, we're not, we're, we're again, not sort of, I, I'm not clear what problem this is solving. I guess that's the, that's the real problem. And I agree with, I, I, get, I get Luke's point, hey, this is for the gender buffer where, you know, you don't want data that's older than a certain point. I definitely want to solve that problem. This doesn't solve that for me. I, I want to move on, but I want to, can you, so when you say call it, it doesn't solve it for you. It's because of the way it's currently written? Because, it, because it's basing the time off the, that the part that doesn't work for me is the time is basing it off the, the end of the GOP sequence versus the time the object was received. If it was Thanks. a timer based on uh, when the object was received, that'd be fine. The fact that the objects are even in a GOP sequence is insane to me. Like that's 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 outside the context of what a relay knows about. It's not something that should be in a relay text. Cool. Thanks for clarifying. That's very helpful. Uh, Victor. Yeah, I, I really do not understand this. Uh, like if you are having a, it is perfectly fine to have a 30 second job and set your timeout to like 250 milliseconds. Like if you are putting everything into a one group that is 30 seconds, that means you have different dependencies in a chain and that means you're stuck transmitting all of them regardless of what you do. Uh, asterisk unless you do SVC, but even then you're still stuck transmitting some kind of dependency chain. And the only time where you really can give up is when you get a new iframe, and that's when this delivery timeout kicks in. It's once I had a new iframe, how fast do I give up on previous stuff? Uh, th does this make sense? Uh, let, let me just respond to that, Victor, because I, I think, no, no, I don't think it does make sense. I mean, this call right now is on something that's probably using a 30 second GOP sequence or something like that, right? And it definitely is not going to display frame. It's going to give up on frames that are larger than whatever. It certainly is by something time something's 500 milliseconds old. It will never be used. It's gone. So yes, it makes sense to give up. So I don't think I don't I don't think the keep trying for stuff that's older than 500 second or milliseconds makes sense on a, in a call like this. 200 it doesn't matter what the numbers are but you know what i'm saying right like i think you should give up okay Makes sense. And, and the reason why is it's not one stream right that data is competing with data in other streams that might work yep see previous pr um luke so i'm gonna agree with victor <laughs> completely um so colin i think the problem there is like let's say you're five seconds into a got a group and you decide, oh, this one frame is late by 300 milliseconds, I'm gonna drop the entire stream, which means I get nothing for 25 seconds. I, and, and what Victor's saying is in that scenario, you'd have something like a PLI that says, actually end the current group, start a new one, and the ending of the group is what starts this timer. So, and, and you could even like literally have this timer be zero. It could say delivery timeout zero means only send me the most recent group. Don't even waste any time on the previous group. Um, so yeah, it's not quite the jitter buffer. You're right that frames will arrive outside of the jitter buffer still. Um, but that's because there's no other alternative. Um, and to say that it's competing with other things, that's kind of the point of prioritization is to stop that. Okay. So just clarifying question about yeah. that. The PLI that stops the group and restarts a new one, does that restart a new group for everybody on the conference call or just the one person who requested the, PL, the, the PLI? Right or whichever way the mechanism do that because uh, you know if if it's restarting it for everyone in the group that's not really very scalable and it's not really what it's done. I mean that's that's how it works unless you want to spin up multiple encoders for multiple tracks. I mean you I mean, can you can like you could have a separate separate track like a you know a lower rendition that is just a you know high PLI rate for recovery but yeah I mean WebRTC usually like when you send a PLI everybody gets a new keyframe. 
that, 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 just just that's go add one point. Topic. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's you, there are ways around it, but like the idea is that if everybody's serving the same track, that means that they are all sharing the same encoder. So if you did want to like drop everything, like you wanted to drop a group, you either deal that one person getting twenty five seconds of a black screen, or you make a new keyframe for everybody. Uh, Alan, um, I would like to get back to the other PR that I did update as well before the end of the call, but I'm happy to take outstanding comments. And then I'd also like to wrap up on this and figure out kind of what, if we want to move forward with this and update it, like what editorial changes we should make. It sounds like the relay specific nature is one, but um, anyway, go for it, Alan. Yeah. yeah so, 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 so we'll, 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 we'll close the queue quickly uh, soon after this. So if you want to get in the queue, get in the queue on this issue. Okay. Um, I wanted to just like when it comes to sort of this point about like if there's something in the middle of a group and you want a relay to drop it, the current document says you have to use, uh, if you want that behavior, you need to be using datagrams or object per stream. Because if you're using object per, if using a group per stream, the idea is that the relay does not know why the publisher put all those objects in the stream, but presumably because they wanted the properties that Quick affords streams, which is reliable in order to delivery. So if you have a relay is taking things out of the middle of that, that is potentially breaking what the why the the relay, how would the relay know that that was okay, that the application is not going to break if it takes things out the middle? And the current doc for this reason, the current document says you can't do that. Um, which is why the text here is like it is, which says if you are delivering something and you realize that you're over the deadline, you've got to close the whole stream that that's on because otherwise you would create a gap in it that may not, the application may not be able to tolerate. Now, we could maybe change that, but I'm saying that the doc, the language of the doc right now, it's been there for a lot, while. And so I think the idea of like, if you want to be able to drop stuff in the middle of the group, you need to be choosing the right forwarding preference that allows you to do that. Uh, no, go for it. He was closed. Yeah, so I agree with Alan on that point, and I'm trying to understand when this would ever really kick in. Um, it seems like it would only kick, relays, I would think, you know, are, are forwarding things instantaneously. So this would really only kick in if there was some queuing happening at the relays, which means congestion, I would, I would assume. So in the face of congestion at a relay, <clears throat> you want to be able to drop instead of send something I agree with Alan's point that you know putting holes in the stream is going to you know potentially confuse downstream relays. Uh, so I think we need some text somewhere else other than here if we're going to allow something like that. Um, but I'm still missing that this actually solves a good use case because if if I want to apply this, I don't see how I can really apply this because there's conflict with the quick layer below you. You think that you're going to you know stop delivery of something but the retransmissions in quick or you know or propagation times in quick may already still be delivering things way beyond this so i don't see how we're going to have a tight a tight you know millisecond level even 200 milliseconds i don't think you're going to be able to uh if a relay implements this i don't think you're going to be able to honor that towards the endpoints because quick retransmission queues may end up being longer than 200 milliseconds themselves so i i'm kind of scratching my head about Will this actually work in practice? And does it really solve the use case? What is the use case it's actually trying to solve? And does it really solve that use case? Uh, from one comment on a technical matter, Mo, you, you can definitely get retransmissions to stop like in a much shorter time frame than 200 milliseconds. So like millisecond granularity is fairly straightforward. Right, but but so, so if the intent of this is to also interface with the quick stack to, to stop some quick level mechanisms, I think that needs to be flushed out, not just this high, this high level thing, I would think, is just, you know, you do this in your library and you have a quick stack underneath you. If we're talking about trying to affect things in the quick stack itself, I think should explicitly spell out, hey, cancel retransmissions of these, uh, uh, of anything on this stream, you know, for these objects. Yeah, thanks. Victor. Yeah, Alan earlier asked how we implement all this. Is, 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 uh, I don't think there is anything vague about this. Resending a stream in Quick almost universally means you should 
abort attempting any retransmission from the stream. I don't remember if RFC 9000 is explicit about this, but I think at least that transfer spec should be, and it's a well-documented property that resetting a stream stops retransmissions, uh, which is why this explicitly says should reset. Uh, as to how practical it is to implement in JavaScript, there is you call window that set the set timeout with like abort on the writable stream after the fixed number of milliseconds, and that will do that. Uh, if you control your own quick stack, you can do something more fancy where like you actually defer the check until you like attempt to transmit or retransmit something, and then you when that happens you can restat the stream just in time and uh, we actually i think implemented that like back in 2017 and that did work uh so that is like not some abstract theoretical mechanism that was never implemented before cool. um okay on this on this beer um Victor, for you, one clarification. It says subscribe or subscribe update. Did you mean subscribe, subscribe update, or subscribe okay? Or based on your previous comment? Or did you not mean that? I don't Subscribe okay would mean that you... Does subscribe okay even have parameters right now? Uh, maybe it does not. Yeah, the idea here is that you the subscriber asks... The, sending party okay. which, could be, okay. which could be like both delivery client asking the origin or the origin asking the publisher okay so it, it's it's strictly applying a max but like there's no concept of like whether or not the there's no expectation that the publisher is actually able to like kind of buffer for that period of time or anything like that okay i just want to clarify um it sounds like maybe this Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay, ask a clarification question. Um, just just so that if something like PLI is not implemented in that in that case, when when a stream uh, per group is more diffuse and if, if you cannot uh, uh, deliver a group within that time, then for the rest of the group time, there'll be no data delivered, right? Is is, is that the expectation here? Uh, yes. For so the, for, oh, okay. So, to clarify, like in practice, this is how, like for instance, YouTube Live works. Like we set group size to something like two or like to uh, like few number of seconds because we know that our join time is bound like by the like our drop size has to be small because otherwise you can't join and you can't like scale something like pli thank you yeah um so it sounds like there's some editorial updates we can potentially make them make this PR better. Uh, there was also some back and forth about whether the use cases were clear. Um, I'm inclined to improve it slightly to clarify some things, including maybe some of the text about upstream. Uh, does that sound sensible to folks? I guess the question is if there's if there are use cases, if people don't understand the use case that this is solving or don't believe that it's going to solve it that's probably more important to work through that rather before we like add the right text. So um, I'm not sure, do we understand the people who don't think this solves a use case or don't understand how it solves a use case? Ian, do you know who those people are and like what, you, like how to resolve that? I mean, Helen had a particular concern about like, I think how this applied to the uh, object, sorry, the group per stream mapping, which I think I understand. Um, I'm not sure if I fully internalize everyone else's concerns. Um, I also will reiterate that a lot of these mechanisms interact in different ways. And like, I get that like everyone wants to have this like amazing, beautiful, holistic picture of how everything's going to work at the end. But like, sometimes it's nice to do something and then figure out how it works after the fact because that's just how life works. But I don't know. That's that's my personal style. I would rather. I would rather move forward on stuff and then like understand so, how the mechanisms work. But because I, I mean, I can kind of manipulate all of them in my mind, but I can only, I can't manipulate every possible theoretical mechanism with every other possible theoretical mechanism. 
Um, so, Ian, can you articulate the change you're going to make based on Colin's concern? And can we then ask if anyone would object to that landing? You mean the doing it based on um, object granularity instead of? Yeah. We've already outlawed track, which I think is sensible, because um, I think that's bizarre. Uh, and so then the question becomes is, uh, I think it's this text right here. Is group once? Oh. The question is whether you should wait till the group is fully received or not. Uh, I am fine with either. I think in typical circumstances, it's not going to matter that much. Um, but I think probably if we do that, it needs to be clear that what was said previously, and as Alan said, which is if you if you give up on one object, you're basically giving up on the entire stream, right? Like it's one done. So, Luke, uh, Luke. Yeah, so to clarify, that means if a single object is late within a group, you drop the entire group? Is that what the proposal is? You, sorry, you drop the remaining portion of the group. The remainder of the group, if a single object within it is late. I think that's the proposal, is that? I, I, I guess I'd, I was thinking about it a little bit different than that, Luke. What, what, so, so I certainly wasn't proposing that we could skip things out of the middle of the group, like what Alan said, 100% agree with, right? Um, uh, what I was proposing is if the if the group falls behind, you end the stream, right? And that and so I see you shaking your head, but that's that's what I was thinking. So like like I guess we should just sort of work through you know wh whether that makes sense or not. And keep in mind this is not you had a two hundred millisecond you, you know you're you're got delayed for a little bit. This is like you know you've fallen behind your jitter buffer, you you probably have already lost this anyway and are switching to something else at this point. So that's what I was thinking. Um, and maybe we just need to outline the use cases for both directions of that. What were you thinking? Uh, I was thinking you can catch back up. I'd rather not <laughs> drop the group, right? Because you might be behind temporarily, but your network can recover. And uh, like I agree you should send a PLI when your jitter buffer is like just it's too old. Like, I, I don't. I don't think in the mock use cases anyone will ever be sending a PLI. I'm not sure that that really makes sense because you're trying to fan out into a certain way. You'd probably, would probably be in some. I mean, you might request a new stream that got you beginning at a different point that effectively got you a new PLI. But I don't. I, I don't know. You, you know. So I, I think we should just work through. And look, I can see your point. Of, like we might catch up. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm against that or whatever. I'm just sort of saying we need to sort through which, which of those two we're trying to hit here. I mean, uh, what I'm trying to hit is the case where there is not enough network bandwidth and you're not going to catch up and not destroying everything, right? Because I find that far more common than, than other things. And and you'd set your time. I mean, if you were willing to wait five seconds to catch up, you would have set this time out to five seconds, right? So I, I guess I'm saying, well, I mean, well, actually, let me get, like, let me hit that on the catch up case. Wouldn't you do that on the catch up case? Is that what you would do or not? Like in the use cases you're thinking about, what would you do? So use cases I'm thinking about, this only matters if I have two groups. Like if, if basically I could drop the previous group because I already have a new iframe, right? I see. That, that's the case I'm focusing. If you're in the middle and you only have a single group, I don't want to drop it because I'm just going to either artifact or show, show nothing. So I think that's why I like it that it's based on the end of the group because it means you have another group, either in flight or, I mean, it does imply that there's another group, group created, but you know. I mean, for that though, when when you know the real use case is is that you've already transmitted the iframe of the pre, of the new group of the of the like yeah, so, zero of the first of the next group is is actually where the timer starts, not not the end of the previous group or something. Ba right? Basically, like it's implying that there's going to be another group in the live stream. Um, so you can totally imagine if a value of zero is just another way of saying on the next iframe, please reset the previous group immediately. Don't even bother with it. I think that, that that clarification is important, right? Because the, here, what it says is that you have received a current group, the final part of the current group, which is not what you're saying, Luke. Luke is saying, I have a new group started. My previous group is not, what if, for whatever reason, is not fully done. And you want to go to go on to the new group because you don't want to wait on the old older group. Uh, and I think we, we need to clarify that. That did not come through the text that I read here. So that sounds like a far more useful feature than this. Yeah. Is what, is, am I? Am I now hearing what people, folks are saying is that the thing they actually want is uh, this number is really basically saying, how long should I continue trying to deliver old stuff that's older than the most recent thing I have? 
uh, which may either be a new group or a slightly newer object. Is that approximately correct? Is is it's it's more it's more based on do I have something better and newer? No, sorry, do I have something newer to send than it is based on the actual TTL of the the objects I have received? Uh -huh. So my uh, I I am perfectly fine if we move like the timer start from the end of the group in question to the start of the group that's newer, and I think. I might have actually initially proposed that, but then I wrote this because I thought it would be easier to implement. But both are fine, and in most cases, both are like roughly around each other. But I I agree that like the start of the new group would make more sense. Uh, Alan, why don't you? Okay, I'm, I sort of have a question: what how, what that means when it's not live? Um, where like if all the groups laid out already, um, but maybe that just means the timer starts anyway. Um, and then I was going to be maybe ask if we if if both the two mechanisms are separate, like the if if you want two different mechanisms to achieve these two different purposes, or if you want to use one. Uh, next is me. So I'm. Uh... Well, first of all, we're running out of time, so let's let's close the queue here. But I, I, I I'm a little concerned about the idea, like, well, even though this the cl this the client has said, I, I you know, I, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> like, I can't, I cannot use this data. We're just going to send it just because we have nothing better to send. I mean, presumably there are other tracks uh, involved in in any like real, well, not any real, but in, in many many cases, and we would maybe want to be conserve the bandwidth if if the state is truly useless. I mean, I imply this this time this timeout is like, don't send this because I, I'm just going to drop it on the floor. So why why are we sending it? That's a good question. Uh, Colin? I mean, I like like th this comes to that point of like, let's not send things we don't that are that are useless. And I I or I think there's two different sort of use cases coming up here that both make sense to me. And maybe this is you know, address part of them. One is Luke's use case, which is once I'm on to the next GOP sequence, everything in the previous GOP sequence is useless to this client. Obviously, a recording client wouldn't be like that, but for some clients, it's like, yep, when I'm on to the new GOP, I don't care about the previous one, right? So stop any old, we'd have something that was a way to stop streams once the new stream had started um, or the new GOP and sequence. However, we phrase that, I figure out. Like that's sort of one case. And then the other case is the ones where it's like, Look, this is this is this stream has or you know has fallen far enough behind that I'm not going to be able to use it and I'm not catching up on it. I don't care. You know, don't send it again because I'm going to use something else instead. And that you know, I don't want it if the stream falls behind. And this ha all happening long before we get to the end of the group. Um, so I think both of those are pretty. Both of those make sense as use cases to me that we'd want to be able to have a way of dealing with, and maybe this PR addresses one or both or neither or something, right? But like those use cases make sense. Victor, be brief, please. Yeah, uh, it just actually works like with other time horizon. Like you can have uh, like two second gaps, and you can have five second buffer, and it still works. So it's still useful as so you can discard everything that's like five seconds in past, even though it's just like multiple groups behind. Thank you. Ian, do you have enough to go on with this PR now? Do you, do you think you can get to where you need to go to merge this? Um, I think I understand like where we're not is out of the group. So like uh, I'll, I'll say a maybe, but. <laughs> Um, okay. If you have a strong opinion about this, like I just want to ask the community, those of you who who like have a lot of thoughts about this thing, to actually like engage in the in the in GitHub so we can land this. Uh, we're getting close to the cutoff date for the draft, and so it would be really good. I would I think it would be good to like land stuff like this so we can interop it in in three weeks. Um, all right. With that, let's just uh, let's do our wrap up here. Uh, first of all, Alan, thanks for taking the notes. All of you, please like consider volunteering to be the minute taker next week. Um, a few other administrative notes. Please email mq-chairs if you're planning to attend the Seattle interim in person, so we can uh, make sure we have space and lunch and all the other things. And in that email, be clear which days you're planning to attend, Monday through Wednesday. Um, 
Again, this is a, this these virtual internship experiment. If you have any feedback on how this is going, please also email mq chairs and let us know what you think about uh, how this thing went. And um, finally, uh, well, actually, two more things. Number one, I invite those of you who have not been monitoring the chat to look take a look at the chat. There's been quite a bit in Zulip about a lot of these questions, and um, it's worth looking over if you're interested in these issues. And then finally, uh, we are less than three weeks away from Interop. Ian, when do you think you can have a new draft for us to implement off of? Uh, I was hoping to ship one today. Um, OK. So that implies that will not include this PR we've been fighting over today, which is fine. I mean, I, we have I to cut it off somewhere. Nice. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I would have. it would have been nice to make some progress on things uh, so we can right. test it for. I mean, obviously, I can delay till Friday if we think we're going to make progress. Um, I'd also like to highlight that uh, 446, at least some people are relatively happy with that cache duration, max cache duration concept, which is like a tweaked version of what we were discussing last week. Um, we might be able to make progress on that offline as well, um, but probably not by draft deadline. So I will just ship one um, this afternoon, probably without merging anything else unless there's, if there are editorial PRs, which I don't think there are at the moment, um, or maybe there's like one um, I'll merge those before the, the draft, but otherwise. Do you think we might have consensus on 446? Um, or whatever this, this seems, PR is? It seems close. Okay. Uh, I mean, there are some some points that people like less and more, but it seems close. Luke, go ahead. I was going to say, it should be on a stream basis. I think that's the only feedback I have. And the same thing, I think this can introduce gaps if you read it, literally. Colin? <laughs> Any reason for seconds versus milliseconds? Like we had, like it seems like milliseconds was better for my use cases. But um, okay, well, I, that's all right. This is I, this, I guess we got our answer. This is not ready to go. Um, <laughs> it gives people concerned. But again, please, please participate in the GitHub. We can really go a lot faster if if that's happening asynchronously rather than waiting for these meetings. Um, I think it is time to quit. Uh, thank you, everyone for participating. And again, send us feedback about this and email MEQ chairs if you are planning to attend in person. Even if you told me verbally or in through some other meeting, please send an email. Uh, those of you who have asked, who work for Google in particular, <laughs> just send an email so we got a, a record. Okay, thank you. And see everyone next week. Thank you. Bye.